Hello, everybody. Good morning. It's Tim Wild, David S3, and this is week 29 of the Woodland Chronicles. But we've got something a little bit different for you this morning. We have got a question and answer. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. And I'm kind of in the woods. David, you're not in the woods, are you? I would have loved to, but I didn't know if my signal would hold up for us to actually have a conversation together in the, in the woods. Yeah, so I thought yeah. I would play it safe today. I have a plant. A yes, a plant and an angel. And a Maybe I should just piece. brought it over and like left it here <laughs> yeah, whilst we talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. But Tim, thank you so much for inviting me to join you for this this morning. Really looking forward oh, to this. My pleasure. I, I, I thought with the way that the energies are flowing at the moment, we're just coming up to, I mean, we're days away from the Lionsgate portal opening. And I, I always, I know the date is the 8th of the 8th officially, but um, mm. I know you feel this as well, David, that the actual Lionsgate portal period lasts for while the sun transits Leo. Absolutely. And um, so all of this high frequency energy that we felt, I mean, July has been, for me, for you, for everybody else around, and particularly this week as well, a very, very challenging month. It has. For many different reasons, a lot of physical stuff going on, a lot of astral things going on, a lot to do with communication, um, a lot of, I mean, I've even seen something which I call parallel bleed through, which is where you get the kind of like the, the like the merging of different frequencies that shouldn't exist together and and we're mm -hmm. we're sorting out what looks to it, it looks a little bit like a bowl of spaghetti and getting all of the bits of spaghetti in a straight line so we know where we're going and when, when we've when we've kind of been through this particular period of time the lionscape portal we're all gonna be functioning on a very different timeline a very different platform of energy but it's all going on it moment. is for me it's not even really so much about when the lion's gate opens or anything i feel like we hit the the solstice on june 21st and then it just does not stop until the lion's gate has settled down it's like a whole window of time that's just really intense um i don't know about you but every year i find i just i go for you know a, well over a month we're just not sleeping like throughout this whole window of energy hmm. and um like the more and more I feel into this, I think it's just because we're all so busy in the nights. You know, we, we do so much work that we're not consciously aware of because we're offering our astral bodies or, or whatever, doing yeah. our thing. And it's kind of exhausting. It is exhausting. And there's, there's, um, there's a logical answer for, the, for the, the sleeping thing that's going on at the moment. Because if you think about what, what we're doing, in our physical bodies are by you know like what we would regard as a limited physical body which in actual fact you know we are far from limited mm -hmm. we are anchoring in a very very high frequency energy on a daily basis and the nervous system comes into play and it's it's, it's been a lot about the nervous system this year For you sure. can work with these energies and they might feel wonderful and 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 beautiful and angelic and 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 quite rapturous at the time and then afterwards you have to integrate that energy mm. and your nervous system has been aware of that energy before you were physically consciously connecting to it so the nervous system is two steps ahead of the game because it, it's tied in with the brain the kind of the cosmic antennae and the nervous system is sometimes misinterpreting stuff that we have around us and putting us into a state of alarm so we've got this kind of regulation of the nervous system as we get used to these energies coming in and of course we're just catching up with all of this and <laughs> sleep is something that gets greatly affected by by you know like the, the the kind of the being lit up the whole being lit up thing you know it's wonderful at the time and we talk about it all the time and the object is to be more light mm. but we have to accommodate the physicalities of this in the process of doing so 
Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like trying to fit stuff in your boot. When you try and put more stuff in, you have to take old stuff out. And that that's what happens. You know, we are pushing it old is. vibration, old energy out of our physical bodies to make room for the light, for the new codes and everything that's coming through. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's a physical said. process. Yeah, it is a very physical process. And we're carrying a lot of responsibility as well. Mm. And the weight of that responsibility, whether conscious or unconscious, is 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 great. It reminds me a little bit of the analogy of, have you ever seen a bloke carrying shopping bags from the boot of the car to the, the kitchen door? I'm, like, I'm guilty of it as well. I'll try and carry back 10 of them and like, my fingertips yeah. are turning white, you know what I mean? <laughs> but you've you got to do it kind of thing. It's, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to kind of run with all of these bags of like very, very heavy duty energies and shopping and everything like that. And, and the, probably more than anything else, the realisation of just how big this entire process is. Um, if it wasn't so big, we wouldn't be receiving so much pushback from the 3D matrix at the moment, mm. which is another thing which is very triggering for the nervous system. So there's so many different different parts to this machine that are simultaneously kind of working either in alignment or not in alignment. And here we are. That's it. That's it. And it's just a case of tuning into those things and trying to bring yourself into alignment with it the best that you can. And just yeah. going with the flow of it, really, because... Otherwise, you'll just get bogged down. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And in order to assist the lack of bogging, the, the unbogging, <laughs> we, we've, we've, you know, like the, the debogging of the process, we um, thought we'd answer a few questions this morning. That's it. That's it. And I think that leads actually into one of them in particular that I spotted. Um, mm. I'm just going to see if I can find it. We'll start there and then we'll work our way back around. We um, will attempt to answer as many as we can this morning. And, um, yeah. Flow, flow, is, uh, flow in the direction with which it is intended. Typically now, I can't find that exact question, but it's such a common one, and I know so many people will face this, so I can paraphrase it, really, that um, it was it was someone, I apologise, I can't find the exact one to remember your name, but um, about kind of trying to raise kids and be dedicated to the ascension process, you know, being committed to want to step into that role and fulfil that, but at the same time having, you know, dependence, whether that's children or anyone else, really, and just even without children, just day-to-day -day responsibilities that we all have to live, whether we're trying to pay the bills, what, you know, whatever it is that we're trying to do, whilst anchoring this light in and going through this physical process. And you know, what are the things that we can do to, to support ourselves in this? And actually, funny enough, that makes me think, Tim, of your excellent workshop, um, keeping your beautiful vibration that you did this week. Thank you, David. Yeah, I mean, it's... We have got so many things going on at the moment. I think that might have been Jazz Ann Thorne's question. How do we support um, how do we support children going through this um, or the young people and ourselves simultaneously? And the most important thing to do when you have people around you that are dependent is be the is the, it's down to authenticity of frequency and vibration. This particular period of time is about leading by example. Um, there's very few ears that wish to listen to preaching anymore. That it's almost like the the soapbox era is over. We we are we are showing the way. We are the way showers by actions and vibration. So if, if there's little that we can do to control the the world around us but we can control ourselves mm -hmm. and the way that our frequency is managed and that in turn is by far the most effective way of allowing people the space to step into that mode and vibration everybody has got to be themselves at the moment there's a law there's an incredible push particularly from the, particularly again, I'll use the word, the 3D matrix for, you know, like to, for all of the acceptance and all of the other stuff, but it is disguised. And 
we have to be very authentic in what we are anchoring in, what we are receiving, what we are presenting to other people. And ultimately it comes, it comes down to self-love, responsibility, actions, actions speak louder than words at the end of the day. Mm. And so that is the best way that we can support those around us by maintaining the highest frequency and setting the example that is that is the way that teaching is done in harmony with a fifth dimensional heart vibration absolutely well said tim and i think when it comes back down to as well our own personal ascension that we're trying to manage whilst looking after people and things like that you know we would all love to be able to sit in meditation for hours a day and and focus on these things but the reality is that's not possible so I think the best thing we can do is find ways that we can kind of quickly reset our vibration. Um, Tim talked a lot in his workshop the other day about routine, having a plan every yeah. every day, which is fantastic. You know, even if you can just find 10 minutes for yourself every day. In fact, that's why Tim and I created the daily practice meditation in the Ascension Toolkit, just purely if, if you've only got that 10, 15 minutes um, to do something that will set up your vibration for the day ahead of you. That's fantastic. But, you know, if you can recognize within yourself when your energy is starting to drop, um, which, of course, can be one of the biggest challenges. But if you can, there's then things that you can do to very quickly pick yourself up. Simple things yeah. like mantras are so powerful. Have something that works for you. You know, it can be a simple phrase, even just if you ha haven't got something in particular. I am my highest self. That yeah. will work perfectly. I am my I am whatever it is say that to yourself three times and just um make it a conscious thing so you know you can just say i am i am you know and not really give it any thought or you can go i am my i am and feel that in your heart as you do it because it will have much more effect because of that you say that to yourself three times and you will instantly raise your vibration and you know then set yourself up to carry on with the day even if that lasts for you for half an hour or an hour you then spend another 20 seconds doing it again and just give yourself those little pickups that you need throughout the day the other thing that i'm feeling more and more at the moment and i talked about this in my workshop <coughs> last night yeah last year tim talked um, tim and i talked a lot about the auto major that was the year of the mm. auto major chakra i honestly feel that this is going to be the year of the thymus chakra the higher heart yeah. this came back online for us at a fifth dimensional level in 2021 and, you know, all of the common problems, this is that question, you know, how do we go about our day to day lives that requires so much of this whilst remaining in this? That is the exact job that the, the higher heart or the thymus chakra has been built to do to help us with this exact problem and just activating yeah. it. Ask Universal Angel Mary to activate your thymus chakra, your higher heart chakra at a fifth dimensional level and anchor the wisdom from your mind and the love from your heart. And it will draw them together. What it does is it activates your higher mind so that you're coming at this from a, you know, a, a more enlightened perspective, for want of a better word. Yeah. Um, and that will help you remain in that heart-centered ascension state where you want to be, but still with the mental clarity that you need to go about your day-to-day -day job. Because, you know, we've all been there. We've done the most amazing meditation where we've been off with the angels and we're all floaty and, and wonderful and stuff like that. And you feel amazing. But if someone then asks you to do your finances just like five minutes after that, <laughs> you don't stand a chance because you're all down here. Likewise, mm. if you're all up here, you'll really struggle to do the heart-based stuff. And that is what mm. the thymus is there for us to do to help bring the two together. Yeah, thank you, Thymus, because that was very necessary at the yeah. moment, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, they, they recognised, the highlight teams will recognise the state that we're in at the moment. And with that's yeah. why we've been given these tools to yeah. help us do this. Well said, David. Thank you. So no, we... on to the next one. Yeah. Well, this one I liked. Uh, this is from Terry. She said, um, there's kind of two questions here, but somewhat related. How do you clean your emotional body? And secondly, what is shadow work? Ooh. Yeah. Now, shadow work, in essence, is kind of a way of clearing your emotional body. Yeah, um, shadow work is the clearing of the, yeah. the, the deepest, the deepest diving, divey, deepy 
cleaning of the emotional body, isn't mm. it? It is. And we call it shadow work because the, we're basically we're talking about the parts of us that are buried. There's no light given to them. You know, it's the, the emotional patterns that we hold, the thought processes, all of the things, you know. So we can, we can talk, for instance, say, for instance, you're trying to manifest something in your life. You're trying to manifest abundance in your life. I'm sure we can all relate to that. The, the chances are that on sub, some, some subconscious level, even if you're a millionaire, I will include this, even if you are a millionaire, the chances are you have some subconscious programmings running within yourself that are a blocks to abundance. You hear this all the time. People with so much money, they get it, and then they're afraid they're going to lose it. So what happens? Mm. They lose it. And then that fear is gone and they manifest it again. And people do this up and down throughout their whole lives. And it's because these, they have these subconscious programmings running within them that they have no awareness of, hence the shadow yeah. part. Shadow work is about shining the light onto these areas within ourselves and basically working through these things, uncovering them, releasing them and clearing them. I guarantee you have been doing it for years because <clears throat> everyone going through this ascension process, even if they're not consciously awake at the moment, have still been going through this process on some level. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And the reason for that, I mean, there are... The, I, I kind of came up with the, with the realisation a couple of years ago that shadow work and people that specifically focus upon shadow work can get quite addicted to it. Mm. It's a bit like going to the gym and absolutely smashing yourself. You walk out of there, your legs are shaking and everything like that. But you go back and do it again the next day or the day after. It's, um, it becomes something that, that, that you are drawn to. And so you, you can dig as much as you like. You can, you can dig very deeply. But ultimately, I love your definition there as well, David, shadow work is recognizing and working with the aspects of yourself that have previously remained unrecognized mm. or you simply don't want to recognize them. It's going into the waters of discomfort. And of course, you know, we've all got parts of ourselves that we are presented with that we really all oh, like really Ooh. you know it could be this lifetime it could be another lifetime it could be anything that's coming up but what's happening at the moment due to the quantity and the quality of light that's coming in we're all shadow working whether we like it or not there's no there's no option of you know you can do more if you want to do more but ultimately those shadows are being revealed very brightly at the moment and we are it feels to me that we've got more than enough on our plates to be keeping us very amused and entertained with. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well said, Tim. And ironically, that, that thing that you say about the addiction to shadow work, absolutely, mm -hmm. I completely agree. And ironically, that probably comes back down to some form of shadow work that pushes us to... Yeah. It's the kind of the, the martyr complex thing, isn't it? Where mm -hmm. you know you, you're essentially punishing yourself for some reason, and that is because some kind of un unconscious program that you're running that requires shadow work to clear. Um, yeah. As we have a catch twenty two on that one. Yeah, it's like, oh, I'm happy. I know I'm going to go and do some shadow work. Yeah. <laughs> I feel good for a day. What can we do to disrupt yeah, that? Yeah, I know. I'm going to go and really. I'm going to go and stuff that up good and proper. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. But, but of course, where all these things, all, most of these programs are stored within the emotional body because mm -hmm. the emotional body, it doesn't reset when we reincarnate from life to life. So, you know, a lot of these things, these programs, they're not necessarily from this lifetime. Um, they could yeah. be from a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand years ago, if not beyond, you know, that you're, yeah. you're still carrying. Um, yeah, and they are in your emotional body. So, the shadow work is the way of clearing that. But of course, just calling light into it on a regular basis. Violet flame. Yeah. You know, and any conscious any conscious way of clearing it, once you're aware, you can alchemize it. Yeah. So But a lot of the time when you, to to release something, you have to work through it in order to do it. Um, we face init initiations and stuff like that in order to overcome them. And um, that is an essential the shadow work. So by calling the light in will trigger shadow work. It will. It's by its very nature. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Terry, for that question. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, I did actually, on that note, uh, 
Yes, so this is a question from Trudy. Please, can you give me some info about initiations? I can see in the Ascension Dictionary it's defined as a test by your highest self to bring you further along your spiritual pathway. Uh, please, can you give me some examples of what this would look like? Can it be a challenging life event? Yes. Um, and what are we being tested on? How, how we navigate the challenge, our resilience, how we focus? Mm. So, yeah, again, it's... It, it's kind of what we just talked about. An initiation is essentially, say for instance, you are trying to overcome a block to speaking your truth. Um, yeah, and you, right. you know, you talk to the Intergalactic Council on the Board of Karma and you say, I want to release this pattern, this block, this fear, whatever it is that you have about speaking your truth. I want to let all of this go. You know, you can do all the clearing, you can call in light, you can flood these things out of your system. But what a lot of the time that does is it actually brings stuff up to the surface. Again, it's the shadow work. You are illuminating it, therefore it becomes more visible. And that is what allows you to actually work on it. And then generally what happens is a situation will be manifested by the universe to test your response to that situation. So yeah. classically, with like speaking your truth, it might be that maybe someone wrongs you in some way. And in order to prove that you can speak your truth, you have to respond in the right way. You have to stand up, you have to speak, you have to say no or, or whatever it is that you need to do. And then it's almost like ticking a box, like, yeah, I've achieved that. I've proved that I can do that. And in that moment, the box clear. And then, you know, following that on, other things start to clear from within our fields and our bodies, karma knots, all sorts of stuff like that start to clear because we've proven that we've overcome that challenge. Um, what was it? What was it? The, the question you said, can it be a challenging life event? Yes. Massively. It will, it will always invariably present itself as a challenging life event. And... Mm initiations can vary in all different shapes and sizes the higher you are on your pathway the higher your frequency and your vibration the tougher the tests can be so if you are actually bringing yourself into a state where you have you know you you've accepted responsibility you say yes to taking on a spiritual task you will be presented with a a set of a set of tests or initiations maybe simultaneously that mm. all pertain to that particular role and like david said one of the favorite ones is speaking your truth or it could be an initiation of the heart where you are mm. um you are required to to react from a point of unconditional love if maybe in a situation where you're being wronged or you know one of one of the best ones that i see occurring again and again and again is an initiation that I call going dark, where, you know, one minute you've got all of this lovely angelic support around you, maybe physical people in your life, and it's switched off like a tap. And the it's akin to being in a dark room. Okay, so you've got no assistance from your guides and your angels. You've got no outside assistance from people in your life, maybe people that are there for you on an everyday basis. And you are graded on your response to this. Okay, and sometimes these initiations can go on for a long time. Sometimes they're over in a very, very short period. It's all down to what you have agreed to do in alignment with your soul pathway. But another interesting thing is people can often say, well, I've been through that initiation. I've already done it. OK, then you step your vibration. You, you talked about this the other day, Dave, mm. and it did make me laugh because it's so bang on. You know, it's like, haven't I done that initiation three times? And like the response from your team is, yes, but you haven't done it at this frequency, yeah. have you? And so, yeah. you know, you've got to rock through it again. And the end purpose is to get you all singing, all dancing, responding from, from the heart in all aspects and all situations rather than the ego. But at the end of the day, we have to remember that we are human. And, you know, the, 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 the people that are organising or orchestrating these tests for us and our higher self always takes that into, you know, always takes that variable into consideration the tests are 
particularly challenging at the moment. So yeah, that's that's the way it is. Yeah. And it, you know, it's what Tim's saying, multiple levels of the same test, coming back to like the speaking your truth thing, it might be that the first time you say it, you you know, you don't really vocalise it, you say no. Um, or instead of saying no, you know, and you will have passed that test because you you stood your ground and you did say no. But perhaps mm-hmm. the next version of it that might come around a few months later or whatever will it will be a test to see if you can say it in a more authoritative manner, you know, with with more heart behind it, if you will. Um, but I will just say it's okay to fail an initiation. Okay, like that we all do it. You know, because they're hard. They're meant to be hard, okay? And you will fail them from time to time, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, they will come back round again, you know? So if you, you haven't missed your opportunity, if you're trying to, you know, learn to speak your truth and you fail on one occasion, that doesn't mean you're never going to be able to speak your truth. It will come round again. You will have learnt from the first thing. You know, sometimes you're not meant to pass them for the first time because you need to learn no. something from the experience. I always think, you know, if you're trying to to change a pattern, whether you're clearing something or you're just trying to change how you cook in the kitchen or something like that, you know, to build up these thought patterns in our our mind, the first step is always to recognise the problem. That alone can be challenging enough. The second step is to get it wrong, but go, ah, I realised I got it wrong. And then think, well, next time I'll do this. And you might do that two or three times, but when you come to that final time, you will do it right. And it's a journey. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. It's okay to stuff up from time to time. Yeah, that in itself can be the initiation. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah, all good. That's it. It's all part of the plan. Thank you for that. Good question. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Trudy. That was brilliant. Um. So this is a good one from Tracy. I've noticed in some of Tim's meditations that you mention visualize, insert here, a particular archangel or ascended master, e.g. Merlin standing to your left, etc. I find it hard to do this as I have no reference point for what they look like or or how the energy should feel and feel unsure as to how to uh, to continue as I don't get it fully. That's a great question. It is a great question and it's perfectly okay not to be able to visualize Mm. in your head a picture. Now, one of the most important things about working with ascended masters, angels, dragons, unicorns, higher galactics is once you have thought or spoken their name out loud, they are with you. Mm. You don't necessarily have to visualize that. It's just wording to basically form the 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 meditation or the visualization itself the power lies in the intention of bringing these energies to be with you and that does require an element of trust if you're not a particularly mm. visual person i'm not an especially visual person i'm you know like i'm i'm Me more too. clairsentient you know i feel it mm. much more than i see it and you're the same as well david aren't i you? am absolutely yeah absolutely yeah. and uh, you know Every single one of us, and this comes down basically to how your third eye is programmed. Yeah. Every single one of us has a different third eye. You know, mm-hmm. we, we've all been in, in workshops. I've heard Tim, you say this before, where there's one person in the room that can see an angel standing behind you and can hear them singing the most beautiful sounds and all of these in- incredible things. There are people that have the full package um, and have these mm-hmm. incredible things. And obviously that's kind of what we all want although i would imagine if you had that it's probably a double-edged sword um It'd be really distracting i'd be yeah. like oh there's an angel you wouldn't get any yeah. sense out of me exactly <laughs> exactly and you probably see some things you don't want to see so you know Absolutely. sometimes you know these things can be a blessing but also one thing that i've i've noticed you know in my turn doing this it's very easy to listen to someone like tim or myself or or anyone else and then saying I heard this from Ascended Master Merlin or I saw an angel, all of these things. And we use these words that instantly connect us with our ears and with our our ears and our eyes, um, (laughs) our eyes and our ears, um, that make us think, yes, this person is is physically seeing it. Mm. The reality is that most people that are doing this, this role and talking about these things aren't actually perceiving them in that manner 
For instance, you know, if you if you followed my work, I share an awful lot of um, messages that I receive from um, from the angels, and or I'll send the masters or whoever it is. And the way that I do this is I sit down with a pen and the paper, and I open myself up to it, and I I get a feeling um, of each word as it comes through. I don't hear it with my physical ears. I hear it with my third eye. I hear, you know, and I hear two or three words at a, at a time and I write those down. And as I've written those, the next ones are flowing through yeah. and it just comes through in a gradual pro progression. You know, I start writing. I have no idea what even the sentence I'm going to write is going to say until I get to, to the end of it. Um, so it's very easy to see, uh, to hear other people like, like Tim talking about this and think that he's having this massive visual, you know, full IMAX cinema surround sound experience. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but the reality is it's not always like that. Each one of us has a third eye that's been attuned to our own spiritual gifts and talents mm. that is designed for the path that we are meant to walk. There is no one ability that is better or worse than the others. They all have strengths. Um, that being said, though, doesn't necessarily mean just because right now you're like Tim and I and, and you feel energy. That doesn't mean that at some point down the line, we're not going to have some massive upgrade or you're going to clear a veil from your third eye and other things are going to come online. You can always continue to develop your third eye just by constantly clearing it and practicing practice awesome. you know it takes time to do anything and it may that's change a really good point the ultimate um goal of the third eye on a fifth dimensional level is to have balance mm. in all of the different and like like you say for the purpose of the ascension pathway at this moment in time you are geared to be able to bring your gifts and talents in to fruition using what you have been gifted with for the time being but a little bit later on down the line like you said david there's nothing to say that we won't have a perfect balance of all of the 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 sentience you'll be able to see you'll be able to hear you'll be able to you'll be able to feel i mean clear sentience is the ability to feel the universe mm. around you and it's also the most difficult one to hone because you have to differentiate between this huge sea of information yeah and that can be very overwhelming to begin with absolutely it takes it takes a lot of trust to to you know make sure that it's what you're you're receiving and not what you're feeling on an emotional level or what you're desiring yeah. well that's the case with with anything you know you can see and hear things because you really truly desire to and it takes time and practice to really hone these skills they say that it takes 10,000 hours to become a master of anything if you know whether that's um, being a musician or building you know being a carpenter or whatever it is to truly become a master they say I don't know who they are or how they work this out but they say it takes 10,000 hours to become a master of something and so it is you know with our same skills it takes practice it takes devotion and the more and more you use them um, the more they will develop well said, David. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this was one that you liked, uh, Tim. Um, this is from Stephanie. She said, Ascended Master St. Germain has taught me that we, we should not wear the colour red or black. I respect his teachings and understand there is an important spiritual reason not to. My question is, what about all the beautiful red flowers in nature? I live in Hawaii and there are so many beautiful red flowers here. Your thoughts on this? Mahalo. Mahalo, Stephanie. <laughs> Thank you. Um, good question. Good question. Mm, it is. Because I think the particular foundation of that teaching would have been maybe rooted in the in the way that colours or colours that were worn were viewed at the fall of Atlantis because there was a huge aspect of this and I'm, I'm talking about this, this is shadow coming up. Um, a lot of the trouble that was kind of stirred up at the fall of Atlantis was orchestrated by people that were clad in red and black. Okay, it was like the, from the kind of the dark mage aspect. Um, I wear red and black all the time. Mm. And, and for, if, where, when I'm presenting, it's my comfy colour. I like the colour red. I've never been 
guided or advised not to. So I think there might be, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not dissing in any way information that Saint Germain's brought through. But for me personally, I don't find that an issue. Red's a powerful colour. It, it, it symbolises the red ray, the first ray of will and devotion. And I don't think any colour on this planet could be considered bad. It's the intention with which the colour is worn or the energy with which that colour is being expressed by. So there's a lot now that's changed and our intention is everything. It's the same as having a symbol. You can have a symbol that may have, you know, take, for example, the swastika. It only took yeah. five years to wreck that symbol and give it a very bad name. When in actual fact, it's a symbol of the light. So mm. it's, it's been handed down from Atlantis all Absolutely. the way through. It's been used again and again. It's the cross of the light. But it took one person to kind of say, we're going to use it for nefarious means. And now we're having to reclaim the energy of that symbol. And there's so many other symbols that have gone the same way. And I do believe it's kind of a little bit like that with certain colours. Or maybe an, an, another analogy would be people's general kind of response to crystal skulls. Crystal skulls were revered in Atlantean times as keepers of wisdom. The house of the, you know, like the skull is the house of the brain, which is ultimately one of the most highly connected supercomputers that could have been manifested in physical, highly sacred. But then in maybe the last 2000 years or so, people have started to associate the skull with death. And therefore, a lot of reactions to crystal skulls are like, eh, it's a skull sort of thing. I'm, I'm afraid of that. So again, it's... Um, you you have to kind of go with what you feel i think is is yeah. is is the most powerful message here with that okay. yeah I, i'd agree with that absolutely um i i wear black um i don't wear red very often but mostly just because i'm ginger it's not prejudice um <laughs> <laughs> but black i find quite a protective color to wear yeah um, yeah so uh, yeah and it, as it just comes down to our connotations of these as is Tim says, you know, we we talked about in the three D, red was the color of the base chakra, um, yeah. and in particular, there the energy of that base chakra was survival instinct, instincts and things like that, which yeah. so much we don't wish to carry anymore. Um, no. We've moved on to the the platinum version of the chakra, but that doesn't mean that red is a bad color. In fact, red is beautiful. Um, mm. Poppies is Light one red. of my absolute favorite color, um, flowers. They're absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. No. There's no evil there. No, no, none whatsoever. Brilliant. Thank Brilliant. you. Lovely job. Right. So next question. What have we got? Um, I'm just going to, we've kind of covered this, but I'm just going to read it out anyway. It's a message from Diana. Uh, I've been on my Ascension pathway for 30 odd years now, but the issue and question I have is this. I'm one of the people who cannot visualize. I get an idea of the thing, say an orange, but no actual picture. Is there any tool or technique that I can use to unblock whatever this is? Just wanted to acknowledge that really, because it's kind of what we've discussed yeah. already with the third eye. Um, as we say, you can continue to work on the third eye if you want to, working on clearing it on a regular basis and just practicing mm -hmm. using it can potentially improve it. Um, but that I wouldn't say that's necessarily a bad thing, you know. No. We, when we talk about angels, certainly in this part of the world, we refer to them as great winged creatures that predominantly appear male or female, even though technically they are not male or female. Um, you know, they appear to us in a certain certain form, but in essence, they are pure energy. So we see yeah. this a lot at the moment. Unicorns, we you know the classic appearance is to show up, you know, as a wing, as a sorry, not a winged bird, as a horse with with the horn of light and all of these different things. But actually, more and more, we see unicorns coming to us as a pure ball of light. Yeah, um, yeah. and that's because that is essentially what they are. You know, especially as you get up to higher dimensional, you, know, you, you see a unicorn in twelfth dimension. They are usually it can, will come to you as a sphere of light. Um, so to be to be able to see a being as you know you say a, a ball of orange for instance that would be what Metatron is essentially at his 
at his core because his aura is is orange that's the energy he reflects and um it's often talked about that even other uh, say religions, for instance, that have certain deities that may appear in a certain form are actually just a archangel appearing in a different form to those people because it's it's about what those people as a, a society, their background, their history and everything like that, what they respond to, what will come through in a mm. positive manner. So that's why, as I say, you know, archa- um, you know, for us angels, we hear them, we see them as these beautiful winged creatures that it has been chosen as the form that they project to us for whatever reasons but so we can identify with them yeah yeah um they represent themselves as either male or female in most cases but the reality is they are a soul that is genderless um they most of them will lean slightly towards either the divine masculine or the divine feminine and that is why they will choose to represent themselves as either male or female. Some of them, you, know, you hear about Archangel Gabriel. Some people say it's a male. Some people say it's a female. And it's for that exact reason. So I wouldn't worry too much if you don't visualize these things so specifically no. as exactly as they are. Just learn to hone your abilities that you've got and for you know the, the most advantage you can get. Yeah, I thoroughly agree. There's... Um... There's a lot of third eye envy that goes on out yeah. there, like, but like you're saying earlier on, like you say, you've got a class of a hundred people, there'll always be one person in that. Oh, I can see angels everywhere, sort yeah. of thing, and everyone else is going mm, like that, oh, I wish <laughs> I could do it, sort of thing. But we we've got we've got to kind of roll with what we've got, whatever we've got personally, will be incredibly powerful because we are powerful. Mm. You know, you are powerful. You listening to this, you know, you might think that you're not, but you are, and your third eye will serve you impeccably in the format that you have been gifted with. And it's the most important thing is to identify the format that serves you correctly. And mm. later on, mm. who knows, everything could open up and you'll get a lovely balance. But right now, while there's important work to do. You know and acknowledging the soul path and stepping on the ascension pathway that responsibility is an utmost priority so this yeah. is what this is what we're working with yeah yeah and actually you just popped something else into my mind there tim acknowledging your own power mm. is uh, is also an important step because this is a meat suit it's a vehicle this is not who we am who we are you know this no. body that you see is not david it's the spark of light the spark of god that is ignited within my heart chakra that's who i am when i die that leaves my body and it goes back up to source and it the life carries on you know yeah. saint germain is not a physical body he is that spark of light that we see he chose to inhabit a physical body for a physical lifetime where he took on on that name but that's not who he is we are source we are creation we are god we are unconditional love and that is infinitely powerful and learning to recognize that is life-changing love that thank you david yeah. brilliant um do you think we've got time for one more? Yeah, yeah, I reckon we've got time for one more, friend. Yeah. Let's see what have we got here. This is an interesting one. I'm wondering what the current significance of the Palladian energy and Akashic record slash frequencies are. They seem to be more prominent since 7-7, seven, seven, so I'm assuming the 7th of July, um, and would love your insight as to why and or how to work with the Palladian slash Blue Star Angels, please. Grab a crystal. Get a crystal. Yeah. Um, I've got my crystal skull here. Um, I've, do you mind if I just tell a little story, Dave? No, please do. So please do. This, this, is, this is the story of the Pleiadian High Council. And some of you listening might have heard this already. This is back in 2014 when I first started to work with Crystal Skulls or Crystal Skulls as a group. And I had 10 Amethyst Crystal Skulls that I was working with to program. And I had them in a circle, like Crystal Skulls like being in circles, on a grid on my kitchen table and I was having a very, very busy day. So I set them up in the morning when things were quiet 
And for the rest of the day, I was just running around in circles, here, there, everywhere kind of thing. And at seven or eight o'clock at night, I received a message via Facebook from a lady that I'd never connected with. And she said, I'm so sorry. I really hope you don't mind me messaging you. But I work directly with the Plydean High Council. And they say, can you pick up your bloody phone, please? And I was like, what? <laughs> you know? I suddenly like, and then I understood the message immediately because of the, the way that it was formatted. And they were talking about me actually tuning in and connecting to the skulls that had been there tuning with like you know like mm. program programming all day and the Plydean high council would use the crystal skulls as an anchor point to tune into and from that connection which i said thank you very much for um grew the ply the, the the kind of the presentation of the Plydean blue rose which was a healing modality that came through diana cooper and i wrote about that in the archangel guide to ascension and also several workshops and also the acknowledgement and the presence of the Plydean High Council in our ascension process. So, and this goes not just for the Plydeans, but for any high frequency soul that you're connecting with. Your best bet, if you want to tune into them and you want to work with them, is ask them to anchor their light into a crystal of yours. It can be a crystal skull, it can be a piece of quartz, it could be amethyst. And so it can be the Plydean angels or it can be any other aspect of the, the huge Plydean team that wishes to work with you and go from there. Crystals are your friend on that aspect mm. because they will assist you to reach up further and reach up higher. And it gives them somewhere to anchor into, which is in our working field. And you mentioned the word Akashic records. So David and I both tend to work with the halls of Amenti, yeah. which are the, which is where we are now. We're accessing the halls of Amenti all of the time. It's where all of our spiritual gifts, information, and talents are kept. The Akashic records were the records for 3D, the third dimension. So generally speaking, I only tend to go in there if I need to clear something or identify or retrieve something. <clears throat> But for the purposes of working with the Plydeans, um, you'll be tuning into and connecting to the halls of Amenti, but most importantly, bring them into your physical world in the here and now by using a crystal. I think that's that's an important point. Amazing. Thank you, Tim. And I love that story. It's brilliant. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Pick up your... Peter's, these are the words, you know, pick up your bloody phone. It's like, what? Oh, okay. <laughs> now I suddenly the penny dropped. I had to think about it for a few moments but amazing i have to admit I, i've got a little story on that as well actually that um a number of years ago before i started doing this properly i was still on fairly early days of my journey tim and i were, were chatting one day and i think you you were talking about merlin uh, we were just texting i think um yeah and i said oh i know i used to work with merlin in past life i'd love to start doing that again and and uh, you text me back and you said, Merlin says, just put a crystal to your third eye and do it. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> classic Merlin response, classic. Yeah. And I was like, is it really that easy? It's not that easy. I'll put a crystal to my third eye now and nothing happens. And I was just like, okay, okay. But reality is that is absolutely true. And now I work with Merlin on a very regular basis. There's there's a couple of important things here. A, a crystal will enhance your connection, as Tim says. Mm -hmm. Put it straight to your third eye because that's where the connection comes from. Yeah. The problem I had at first was the belief that I could do that. And, exactly. and that's where it comes back to the power that we were talking about a minute ago. That was a, a lack of belief in my own ability that I could mm. just do that. And that's what completely blocked me from being able to do it. You just have to trust that you can do that yeah and it will that's, work that's will massive work. belief in your own abilities yeah so that's it yeah. if you want to talk to the Pleiadians, stick a crystal to your third eye yeah exactly <laughs> they love all of the higher realms need an anchor point when, when you know they're trying to get through to us hmm. because this has been a very difficult realm to reach until quite recently the last 10 years is becoming considerably easier so yeah that's that's uh that's where we sit with that. Amazing. 
Well, I think unfortunately that's all we've got time for today. But um, I just want to say, Tim, thank you so much for letting me join on you. This it's been oh, an David, it's pleasure. been an, yeah. Likewise, thank you, thank you for coming on and helping set up everything and take the questions. It's brilliant. My absolute pleasure, and thank you to everyone that submitted your questions. Unfortunately, there was still quite a lot that we didn't get to. Um, yeah. But I think we should do this again. I think we should make it a regular occurrence. Yeah. Actually, I really enjoyed it. Absolutely, me too. <laughs> I shall yeah. look forward to that. And we've got some more questions that we can work through or we can collect some more. We will yeah. do this again. Brilliant. So from our hearts to yours, sending you all lots of love and we will see you again very soon. Sending you all lots of love. Take care, guys. Bye Have a now. beautiful day. Bye, Bye. for now. <laughs>